Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daybreak. I'm Brandon Kurzowski. And I'm Addison Deal. In today's episode, find out what, it, what is interesting new, what interesting new game show is being filmed here in Pittsburgh. And we'll share the scoop about a scholarship that you might just want to get a piece of. And let's not forget, reporter Carl Carlo Andreasse, Andreasse is here to Polismac this week's political news. Wake up and smell the coffee, Pittsburgh. Daybreak starts right now. Welcome back. Here's your campus news, starting with your weekly weather update with Alexa Shawless. Thanks, Addison and Brandon. As we enter the second month of the year, you'll come to find that Pittsburgh is granted a short break in some of its snowfall. Aside from some morning snow showers on Friday, next week looks to be mostly cloudy skies. The temperatures for the week are certainly higher than they've been recently, ranging from the upper 40s to the mid 30s. Though you can expect a lot less snow, there will be several rain showers. So throughout the week, pardon me. So Hold on to your umbrellas, and I hope you all have a wonderful Groundhog's Day. I know I have for the last four days. That's it for your weekly weather update. Now, let's hand it back over to your hosts. I don't know about you, but I am so over the cold weather. I'm ready for it to be warm again. I, I agree. This morning was ridiculous. I was so happy that my class is on Zoom this morning because mm -hmm. I couldn't see myself going out in negative three degree weather. Oh yeah, you have to completely layer up every time I go outside. It's just, it's too much work. I don't want to do it anymore. It was so <laughs> cold that I was driving down Midnight Road and I decided to, you know, just put my windshield fluid on. Um, it froze. Oh no. <laughs> my windshield froze on me. And no. I was just hoping for the best, you know. Yeah. Just you know, hoping for the best. This is what you got to do in life. Yeah. But thanks for that update, Alexa. Now let's dive into the news that matters most, starting with this week's campus news. This weekend, the Pittsburgh Playhouse will be hosting a tribute to famed choreographer Paul Taylor. The Paul Taylor Dance Company will be, pre be performing three of his most famous works, Airs, A Field of Grass, and Esplanade. A post-show talkback will also be held on Saturday after the show. The Playhouse is also offering free tickets to all Point Park students for both performances on January 29th and 30th. Students can reserve the tickets online on the Playhouse website using the code PTDANCE. Point Park University has, recognized, has been recognized for having some of the best online degrees in the United States. In a study, in a study conducted by Intelligent.com, six programs were noted. The accounting bachelor's degree was the highest for the university, ranking at 14. The study also had Point Park's online adult education master degree ranked at 22. These high rankings are among the 704 programs studied across 2,900 colleges across the country. Applications are now being accepted for two of the Press Club of Western Pennsylvania's scholarships. These scholarships include the $5,000 Bob Fryer Memorial Scholarship and the $2,500 Press Club of Western Pennsylvania Scholarship. Any sophomores or juniors majoring in any journalism major, including print, broadcasting, photojournalism, and multimedia, are able to apply. The deadline for applications is March 1st, the winners will be announced on April 15th, and the awards will be presented on May 24th at the annual Golden Quill Awards. The application can be found on the Press Club's official website. Guys, make sure you're applying for those scholarships. I mean, who doesn't want free money? There's a lot of them out there, too. Not a lot of people applying, so there's tons up for grabs. Well, you said one of them was called the, the Print Press one? It's the Press Club of Western press PA. Club. Um, so, yeah, apply for that one. I mean, how much was it again? Uh, one of them was $5,000, and then one of them was $2,500. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money, and, you know, we're all broke, poor, we're poor college kids. So, <laughs> yep. I mean, every little bit helps at this point. For sure. After the break, we'll give you an update on what well-known superstore is opening in the Kauffman Building very soon. And we'll let you know about a new grant for Pittsburgh's Artist of Color. And don't forget, our reporter Carlo Andreasi is here to give you this week's political news. Don't go anywhere, Daybreak. We'll be right back. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome back to News Night. of the student body of the Pittsburgh Public School. Some of the United States allies. Thursday, the FBI was seen reading. Let's get started with today's forecast. Today's high will only reach about 31 degrees. It's looking a little cooler than we've seen in the past few weeks. All this and more 
All this and more. All this and more coming up on Newsnight. Coming up on Newsnight. Coming up on Newsnight. Welcome back to Daybreak. Without further ado, here is your city news. A new game show is being produced in Pittsburgh, but with a positive twist. According to the Tribune Review, the show will be called Scientastic, which is based off sign language. Each, contest each contestant will learn 50 sign language words before the show, then compete in various competitions such as, such as charades to see how well they have learned the words. Show creator and P Pittsburgh native Dan Cook hopes that the show can break down the quote, invisible barrier between hearing and deaf words, end quote. Details on when the show will air have not been released yet. Pittsburgh has introduced a new grant program that supports artists of color, naming the first re three recipients of the grant. The program is called the Exposure Artist Fellowship and it is provided by the Pittsburgh Foundation. Each recipient will receive $50,000 as well as opportunities for professional work and the ability to pair with a local art institution. The, the recipients include Chris Ivey, a filmmaker who focuses on the effects of gentrification on communities of color, Shakith, a multidisciplinary artist whose work focuses on queer black men, and Anna Armengod, another ar multidisciplinary artist who works with undocumented immigrants to share their stories. Target is getting one step closer to opening a new store in the old Coffins building downtown. According to KDKA, the city's zoning board approved the new outdoor signing for the store, but rejected a plan for a 69-foot sign that was supposed to hang over its parking lot. An opening date has not been announced yet for the store, but is expected to open later this year. A five below may also be in the works for the same building as Target, but details have not been finalized. You know, I think it's really cool what they're doing with that um, that new game show. I, yeah, I agree. Learning sign language is like such an like an important and cool skill that I think everybody could easily learn with a lot of hard work. And the game show can help everyone. Do you think we can do some sign language? <laughs> Maybe we can. All right. Uh, skeleton. Wow, <laughs> she's great at this. I love it. Coming up after the break, we have this week's Ray of Sunshine. And we'll politismack your political news with Carlo Andriasi. Stay tuned. Daybreak, daybreak will be right back.
Welcome to PolitiSmack. I'm Carlo Andreasi. Recently, tensions between Ukraine and Russia have been escalating to a dangerous territory. Namely, Russia has been massing over 100,000 troops on the border of Ukraine and has even moved into Belarus, a Russian ally. This is after several months of Russian military pressure. Ukraine, along with every nation in Europe east of Germany, were formerly constituent states to the USSR. What we can deduce from Russia's current military campaign and their holding of nuclear weapons is that the country is seeking to invade and conquer Ukraine, and potentially even more of Europe moving forward. With the threat of nuclear weapons at stake, this is quite alarming not only to Ukraine and NATO, but to the sanctity of this third planet to the sun we call home. The intentions of Russia are very unclear at this point, with Moscow giving mixed signals, everything from claiming Ukraine's ambitions to join NATO as a domestic threat to claiming they have no intention of invading Ukraine. With Russian President Vladimir Putin engaging with verbal and now active aggression. However, it seems unlikely that anything but the obvious is the case. President Biden, along with all of NATO, is taking action to try and prevent the invasion from happening, or at the very least prolong the invasion discouraging Russia from attempting further acts of imperialism. In the case of the United States, which plays the biggest role in NATO militarily, President Biden has decided that the best strategy for now is to protect Ukraine without risking escalating our own tensions with Russia. The U.S., along with the rest of NATO, has decided to arm Ukraine with defensive weapons, and Biden also pulled out American troops stationed in Ukraine and currently has no plans to send any more of our own troops. However, thousands of troops have been put on high alert should Russia escalate further on their own. With NATO helping Ukraine with its significantly inferior military compared to Russia, they don't necessarily have a fighting chance against an invasion, but should Russia invade, it will be much more of an uphill battle. Biden has also threatened Russia with sanctions pending an invasion, and he warned that, quote, it would be the largest invasion since World War II. It would change the world. Only time will tell if NATO's hybrid of diplomacy and defensive military action will be effective. That's all for your PolitiSmack update. Now let's get back to your hosts. Thank you, Carlo. Before we say goodbye, we'd like to share with you this week's Ray of Sunshine. And after all that fun stuff, in case you haven't joined, if this is your first time joining us or you need a refresher, Ray of Sunshine is our way of starting your day with a smile and an inspirational quote. This week, we wanted to choose a quote that highlights the importance of teamwork and power in numbers. Much like our show, nothing in life can really get done alone. The quote comes from athlete Michael Jordan and reads, quote, Talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence win championships. Teamwork is very important. That's how we put on the show every week, and that's how every show on UV gets put together every week. You know, without our amazing producers, Cole and Sam, we wouldn't be here right now. In fact, mm -hmm. without these amazing people here, this just wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. I just wish the world could work <laughs> together. It'd be a yeah. so much better place if everyone could just make, just be good. Yeah. That's my advice to everybody. If you're listening, I'm so trying to solve world problems, be good. Yeah. But that's it for our episode of Daybreak. Thank you so much for watching. You can catch clips from all of our previous Daybreak episodes on our YouTube at UView Television. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Daybreak PPU. I'm Brandon Krasowski. And I'm Madison Deal, hoping your news is good news. Have a great day, everyone.